given f of x equals the square root of x and g of x equals the absolute value of x minus 3, find g divided by f. And then determine the domain for each of the functions, or in this function, in interval notation. Okay, so more function operations. This time we're just doing division, right? So in this case, we have to take our g function and divide it by our f function. Now in the bottom right-hand corner, I have an easier way to memorize what they're talking about here. For dividing functions, when they have g of f, or g, uh, f divided by g of x, it's just the, the top function, f of x, and divided it by g of x. Now in this case, it's the reverse. So what they mean is that they want to divide these functions. So it's the same thing as saying g of x divided by f of x. Now all we got to do is just plug in what our g of x function was and our f of x function. Well, the g of x function was the function that they stated second, right? g of x was just the absolute value of x minus 3. So that's perfect, right, for the g of x. And then what was the f of x function? Well, the f of x function that they said over here was the square root of x. So square root of x. And now, whenever you want to do your domain with functions, always take your domain from the one before you simplify. All right, so now I just put a star here because I know that when I do my domain, I'm going to be going it based off of this. But can we actually simplify this? No, right, cannot simplify. It's in the most simplified form. Simplify. So that's our answer. If you wanted to say it in this notation or this notation, it's the same exact thing. So g of x divided by f of x is just the absolute value x minus 3 over the square root of x. And that's the first part. Okay. Now we just have to look at this function and determine the domain. It's as simple as that. So now you need to know your rules for a domain. Now I put it over here in your tips and tricks on the bottom left-hand corner. In order to find the domain, think of any restrictions there are in the function. Your restrictions are going to come from two things. They're probably going to come from square roots, so look out for those, and they're going to come from denominators if you have an x value in your denominator. You should know your restrictions for both of these. For your square roots, you can have basically any number from zero onward, all right? So no negative values. The second one, denominator, guys, this cannot be zero. So just know your restrictions for both of them. For square roots, you could have zero and above under your square root. For x's in the denominator, it could be any number, negative or positive. It just cannot be zero. So look what they gave us. Ugh. <laughs> they gave us a denominator for the x and they gave us a square root. So shoot, I got to combine both of these, right? But if this one is in the denominator, we know that this cannot be equal to zero. The actual um, denominator, right? So what I can do is I can basically just say, okay, well, the square root of x, whatever this is, it can't be equal to zero, right? So basically just solve for zero. In order to undo a square root, you would square. But x would equal 0, right? So if I plugged in a 0 here for this x value, the square root of 0 is 0. And that's the number that we cannot put in. So x technically cannot be equal to 0, since there would be a 0 in the denominator, and no zeros in the denominator ever, 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 ever. But can it be any number higher or greater than zero? Yeah. So now we're going to be doing our domain. We know that we have to have an x value that has to be greater than zero. It can't be greater than or equal to 
just greater than. So now we're going to be doing our interval notation. You use parentheses if you're excluding numbers, and you're using brackets if you are including them, if they're inclusive. So from here, I have to start at zero, and technically I could go any number above zero. So, um, infinity, right? Positive infinity. We're going in the right direction on a number line. So I have to start at zero, and I end at infinity. This means that I can have all numbers starting at zero all the way to infinity. However, are we going to exclude or include zero? We just said down here that it cannot be equal to zero. So zero is exclusive. So therefore, it's got to have a bracket. Actually, no, just kidding. Whoops. It's got to have a parentheses, right? Because parentheses is exclusive. And now just know that in theory, infinities exist. However, it's not an actual numerical value. So you exclude it as well. And this is your domain in interval notation. So these are your two answers. This is the actual function. And then you just got to look at the function and determine what the domain would be in interval notation. So we have to start at zero, go all the way to infinity. No negative values here because the square root will not allow negative values. Okay, guys, this one was fun. Easy peasy. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, yeah, if you want to subscribe to the channel and help us out, I thank you so much for that. But anyway, I'll see you guys all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.